Hi Booktube, it's Roz and I've managed to get a bit behind again with um, tags so I'm bunging in a, a, a bonus tag not on Tag Tuesday um, and this is the Shakespeare tag and I was very kindly um, tagged by Katie of Books and Things who's just one of my favourite booktubers. She's really one of the people who got me into booktube so how could I neglect to promptly do something that she tagged me in. So first of the prompts oh i will link down below um whoever it was whose original tag this was who's and that has gone out of my head right now so apologies for that whoever it is but thank you for this lovely tag that you created um so first question is what was your first exposure to william shakespeare now that is one of those tricky questions for someone of my age background uh, education i honestly couldn't say that there was ever a time in my life when I wasn't aware of Shakespeare um like you know even like as a relatively young child um people would talk about it or you'd be taken to see things or things would you know he's ended up being quoted you'd learn you'd learn um learn a sonnet off by heart when you're in primary school that's the sort of thing people people did to children when I was young which I reveled on but probably turned a lot of people really right off it all. Um, Midsummer Night's Dream was considered an entirely reasonable thing to teach um, uh, a sort of a nine ten year old um, in, in the kind of school that I went to and I, as I say I, I, I'm, I'm happy with that but I'm not sure it was great for everybody. So hard to think of first exposure. So I try to think of other firsts in a way. Um, the first Shakespeare that really spoke to me was probably Romeo and Juliet, doing that when I was about 12, learning it at school and then watching a film, probably the Zeffirelli, actually. I don't know when that came out, but I'm sure we were shown that to um, help us on In the same way that people now would be shown um, the um, Claire Danger Leonardo DiCaprio um, version. Um, the first Shakespeare that I've played that I felt I really got to know intimately, I suppose, was probably Macbeth. Um, and that I think, yeah, I know why that is, why I have a particular feeling about that in terms of exposure, as it were, is that I suppose up to then, um, and this was when I was about sort of 14, I suppose, maybe 15, um, up to then read and seen various um Shakespeare plays Shakespeare poetry but he was like a kind of historical thing a thing from the past that like you liked because the language was nice and it was interesting and and um it, it, you've been told it was a good thing um then when I was studying Macbeth at school we were taken to see a performance of it um at the Tramshed Theatre in Woolwich and it was a performance where um a production that was set in the Vietnamese war um and at some that was a light bulb moment as they say for me I think about Shakespeare because you realizing that yes this is a historical play right this is this is something you think of in terms of Tudors and Elizabethans and Stuarts and you know but actually you can grab it now and take it wherever you want because that's the strength of um Shakespeare's plays that you can muck about with them basically um and yeah put them in different time periods different yeah and they shine through and it works so that was I suppose when I I fell for Shakespeare in a different way so I will pick that as my kind of like first exposure in in yeah yeah so question number two which Shakespeare plays and poems have you read um poetry well a lot of sonnets basically <laughs> um probably not all of them plays now this is really difficult because I, I i would say i've probably read it would be easier to try and think which have i not read than which have i read if that makes sense i know i haven't read pericles i know i haven't read henry the eighth um i've read an awful lot over the years that's the long and the short of it um and then the next question is, um, which um, Shakespeare plays have you seen on stage or, or film? Um, and this links to why I've read nearly all Shakespeare plays, because the BBC 
did this wonderful thing between um, 1978 and 1985. They they basically put on 37, all 37 of the sort of established, definitely by Shakespeare, Shakespeare plays. And I watched just about all of them. I missed a few towards the end because back in those days, you could only watch things on telly when they happened. You know, things like Watch Again, iPlayer. Netflix, all that didn't exist. So um, if you missed it, you missed it. So towards the end, I, I didn't necessarily have a television or I was had off traveling and doing things and, and missed a few. But but the vast majority of the 37 I saw. And the thing that I used to do was, uh, as well as watching it, I would also read it um, because I was that kind of um, geeky, nerdy, um, literary child and young woman. Um, there you go. No apologies for that. So, again, I've seen just about all of them. I, um, I'm i also very lucky in that I grew up just outside London. And um, the in at the time when I was when I was growing up and as a young adult, the and the National Theatre and the Royal Shakespeare Company were close at hand. You know, the RSC in those days uh, used to perform at the Barbican. And that was like their London home. So they had a Stratford home and a London home. It, it, uh, also, I think it was the days of the GLC. There basically there was this brilliant thing when I was, when I was about sixteen and nineteen, where you could, I could hop on a train up to London if if I was free, um, and go and queue up in the morning and get like something called a student standby ticket, which was like dirt cheap, and I could go to a matinee in the afternoon and something else in the evening, and you know I at the Barbican or at the National Theatre and basically I just worked my way through everything that was on for a couple of seasons and they were great seasons of of, of, of Shakespeare and so on um, I was lucky and saw some yeah really very fine performances then and then over the years I've carried on going and seeing loads so again um, it's harder to think which have I not seen I'm not sure that yeah how many I've not seen really um as I say I know Pericles I haven't because I haven't read that either um yeah very few so there we go um do you have a favorite edition of the complete works is the next question no I don't I feel to have a favorite edition you'd have to know several editions of the complete works well enough to say which was your favorite and um that would be a lie so I won't even pretend now Next set of questions is really difficult because it asks you to name your favourite comedy, history and tragedy. Um, now, I've got a particular problem with the comedy, um, which I will come back to. But um, favourite history, um, for sort of the sheer joy of watching it, probably Henry V, because it's got a bit of everything, hasn't it? And um, it's really rousing and, yeah, fun. And he's a great character um, with a nice story arc. And yeah, but for language, it has to be Richard II. So... Richard II just takes it. Um, Favourite tragedy? Now, it's so difficult, isn't it? Um, I kind of fluctuate between King Lear and Hamlet, but I think I'm going to come down on the side of Hamlet as being my favourite tragedy. I And I think the reason for that is um, a few years ago, I saw two really amazing productions um, within the space of a few months. Um, one with David Tennant in the lead role and one with Rory Kinnear, hugely contrasting approaches to the play um and just you know when you just have like a bit of a magical magical experience with a particular play due to certain productions and i i think um uh, yeah that's why hamlet's my favorite having said that um both i've seen ian mckellen and um doing hamlet which was superb and uh um oh simon russell beale um but no Hamlet is. Now then, favourite comedy. Now, if we're talking your straightforward Shakespearean comedies, you know, like Twelfth Night, Comedy of Errors, Taming the Shrew, all of those, you know, the sort of earlier ones, um, then my favourite will be As You Like It. And um, the reason, two reasons, actually, why As You Like It is my favourite um, comedy. It, the classic Shakespeare comedy trope as it were is the thing where you have what was a, an actor who would have been a boy or young man playing a woman who then in, in the play then um pretends to be a man and then in as you like it the woman who's um 
pretending to be a man, Rima character is pretending to be a man, then actually then pretend to be a woman. Um, great, yeah, silly, but irresistible. Um, also has a really good fall. Um, yeah, really good fall, as you like it. But I think the reason that it's my favourite is because it's one that I um, performed in. And any any play that you study in depth or any depth play that you actually get to perform, you kind of get to know and love in a different way, don't you? And I laughed when I thought of this also because when Tilly did, uh, Tilly, my daughter of um, uh, Tilly's Shelf, did this same tag, she talked about Miss of the Night's Dream and the fact that when she performed it at school, she was cheated of the Role of bottom because she was she was picked for that role and then the music teacher said that she didn't sing well enough for her to teach her to sing badly so she got bumped off being bottom and um had to be had to be peter quince instead and uh, i have a similar story for as you like it because um i auditioned for the part of celia and got the part of celia which was really nice um uh, I was really delighted. Then the person, the, the drama teacher realised that the person she'd chosen for the part of Rosalind um, was shorter than me. Now, I was at an all-girls school, so you have to bear in mind we were all, we were all girls. And um, Sharon Bowler, who got the part of Rosalind, was the best actress in our year, without a doubt. And I had no, no complaints that she got the part of Rosalind. But this drama teacher decided that because in the play it talks about Rosalind being uncommon tall, that there was no way she could have a Celia that was taller than her Rosalind. So I got dumped from, from being Celia and it was given to someone shorter, shorter than me. And I had to play the Duke instead. Um, happy memories still. But obviously it still rankles, doesn't it? <laughs> so unfair. I mean, heavens above, wouldn't worry someone now, would it? Very traditional, very traditional. Um, now, but this brings me to a problem because a couple of my favourite Shakespeare plays don't fall neatly into that categorisation. You know, the comedy, tragedy, history play categorisation, because some of his late plays, um, I mean, you can't really call them comedies. Um, and two of them are two of my absolute favourites. One is The Tempest and one is The Winter's Tale. And I think, yeah, The Tempest, yeah, particularly, um, yeah, it's obviously not a comedy that, that, that i think there's late plays sometimes people call them tragic comedies i don't know anyway i'm going to put in a vote for saying that the three-way definition is um far too limiting and so i'm not going to play ball and i'm going to have the tempest as well now next question is your least favorite play now i i sort of agonized over this a bit um there are players like Tame of the shrew or whatever that have kind of that are difficult for us now because of some of the attitudes in them um two gentlemen of Girona would, uh, Verona, <laughs> not Girona would be another good example so it's kind of kind of a bit of a rapey sort of plot um yeah um and and like the the like the 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 ex-girlfriend of, of one of the main characters sort of traipses around following him um even and he he kind of sexually assaults someone else and then the kind of happy ending is that Julia, his ex-girlfriend, he sees the error of his ways and goes back to her. And I'm thinking like, no, girl, no, don't do that. He's not a nice man. So definitely plays with problems. But in the end, I decided that my least favourite Shakespeare play had to be the one that I just can't bear to watch. Um, and that is Othello. And that is not because it isn't a brilliant play. It is an absolutely brilliant play. But I just find it too painful. Yeah, I just can't. It's like, no, no. People say, oh, would you like to come and see this? with this great production of the like, No, no, don't make me watch that play again. It's too, I can't bear it. There you go. Obviously, I'm just a sensitive little flower, aren't I? Um, I think if you, if you know Othello, you'll know what I mean. Which play would you want to direct? None of them. I want other people to do it for me much better than I could, is the answer to that question. And now the last question is, which lesser known play do you think deserves more attention or are you most excited about? Tricky this, because I've seen some other people's answers to this question and some of the things they've come up with, the plays that I don't think of as lesser known, like The Winter Sale, for example. Um, I... I was tempted to pick uh, Timon of Athens because that's one of the that's another problematic play that's not performed very much. But I saw David Suchet um, playing Timon and 
it suddenly came together and made sense. And that's so often the way of Shakespeare. That, like you, you, you can read his plays on the page and think, oh, that's a bit, oh, that's not very funny, or that's not very, that doesn't make sense, or I don't. Yeah. And then you go to a good production and it all just goes, ping. You know, you've got it. It, it, it works. Um, but I finally plumping for Coriolanus because I realised that that's the one I'm most excited about at the moment because. Um, the National Theatre Live um, is going to show it um, uh, starting tonight. You know, they're doing these things where they show plays for a week um, from their sort of rep past repertoire. Um, and I'm really excited about seeing it because I don't think I've ever seen um, a production of Coriolanus that is really satisfactory. Um, and this one is with um, Yummy Hiddleston, um, who, who, who we all love don't we um so uh that's why i'm excited and uh that was a very enjoyable tag thank you for tagging me katie